Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the last lesson in meteorology. It is uh, the review of everything that we've covered so far. Hopefully, you figured that you've learned quite a bit about meteorology for your uh, role as a private pilot, and that the lessons that you have been learning have become increasingly practical, and that you are now able to successfully read and interpret weather. So let's get started uh, with this review. Air in the troposphere cools as altitude increases. The tropopause height is variable and the temperature is minus 56 degrees Celsius. The standard atmosphere is 15 degrees Celsius, 29.92 inches of mercury, 1, 1,013.2 hectopascals, a lapse rate of 1.8 degrees Celsius per thousand feet and a triple pause height of 36,000 feet. Air cools when it expands or rises and heats up when compressed or subsides. Remember we use a standard atmosphere, the units 15 degrees Celsius, the atmospheric pressure 29.92 inches of mercury or 1,013.2 hectopascals and a lapse rate of 1.98 degrees Celsius per thousand feet. Cold air has higher contraction of pressure with altitude than the warm air. High pressure area is associated with cold, clear weather, but sometimes heavy fog. Low pressure area is associated with unstable weather. Isobars on a weather map link areas with equal atmospheric pressure. QNH is the altimeter setting for the aerodrome, where the altimeter reads the proper field elevation. QNE is the standard pressure of 29.92 inches of uh, mercury that altimeter reads the pressure altitude. Be uh, really careful when you're going from high pressure or high temperature areas to low pressure or low temperature areas. So it's from high to low, look out for low. Talk about some heating and cooling mechanism. Convection means we end up with unstable air. Advection is air moving over a surface carrying its properties. And radiation is a heat loss or gain by electromagnetic radiation. An inversion is an increase of temperature with altitude, characteristic of very stable air. Air is unstable if it cools faster than the dry adiabatic lapse rate of three degrees uh, per thousand feet. The air is stable if it cools slower than the saturated adiabatic lapse rate or 1.5 degrees per thousand feet. Stability of the air is modified by advection, daytime heating, subsidence, inversion and convective cells. We have a number of lifting mechanisms, frontal orographic convection and convergence. Stable air is characterized by stratus type clouds, driz uh, drizzle, mist, fog, poor visibility. Unstable air is characterized by cumulus type clouds, good visibility, rain showers and thunderstorms. Stratus type clouds are layer type clouds. They're continuous, uh, you could as or associate with continuous light precipitation. Cumulus uh, red clouds are fluffy and associated with intermittent heavy precipitation. The prefix on the cloud type uh, denotes a secondary property. So alto is metal, zero is high, nimbo is rain. Fog occurs when the temperature reaches uh, the dew point. Radiation fog occurs on cold, clear nights where the uh, heat from the earth radiates out into space. Advection fog occurs in the maritimes where more moist air from the ocean blows over the cold land. We have strong winds and can last days at a time. Upslope fog is essentially a cloud, but the terrain is at higher elevations. Mist is similar to fog, but there's better visibility. So five eighths of a mile or better, we call that mist. Turbulence is caused by convection, such as hot air uh, rising, mechanical from wind blowing over a rough surface or orographic wind blowing up over the terrain. Wind shear is the change of wind velocity with altitude and it's a major risk operating in the vicinity of thunderstorms. It can be increased performance or decreasing performance. Wind velocity is determined by the pressure gradient and other factors such as Coriolis of force and topographical effects. In a climb, the wind tends to veer and increase in speed. And in a descent, the wind tends to back and decrease with speed as, uh, because of friction with the ground. Squall lines uh, characterized by strong gusty winds are associated with a fast moving cold front. 
A land breeze occurs at night when the earth cools faster, and a sea breeze occurs during the day when the earth uh, heats up uh, faster. Wind shear is a change of wind velocity with altitude and occurs near thunderstorms. Air masses are named after their temperature and moisture contents. For example, the continental Arctic is going to be a dry, cold air mass. Maritime tropical will be a, a wet, hot air mass. Factors that affect the weather are temperature, moisture, and stability. And the air mass properties can change slightly based on the latitude, season, and elevation. A front is the boundary between two air masses that are advancing or receding. A cold front is cold air forcing itself under the warm air. It's associated with unstable weather and gusty winds. A warm front is a warm air mass advancing or a cold air mass retreating. The weather associated, the clouds are cirrus, cirrostratus, altostratus, and stratus. In the winter, we can get these winter warm fronts where we get snow, ice pellets, freezing rain, and then rain. An occlusion or a trowel is a cold front that is caught up to a warm front. You will end up with both warm front and cold front weather. There's three types of icing, clear, rime, and hoar. Clear frost is uh, from large super cold water droplets near zero degrees. Rime ice is rough, small super cold water droplets, and then hoar frost forms uh, from uh, radiation and on cold, clear nights. Thunderstorms have three requirements. They require moisture, instability, and lifting action. There are three stages in of a thunderstorm. The cumulus stage, uh, characterized by updraft. The mature uh, thunderstorm, that is characterized by hail and maximum turbulence. And the dissipating stage, characterized by downdrafts. We can have uh, six types of thunderstorms. Frontal, air mass, nocturnal, squall line, or graphic, and convective. Although, I guess you could argue that convective, orographic, and nocturnal are all considered air mass thunderstorms. And thunderstorms, unfortunately, kill pilots on a regular basis. So a review, you can get your weather from Nav Canada on plan.navcanada.ca or flightplanning.navcanada.ca. You can also make, give a, a telephone call, 1-866-WX-BRIEF. And the uh, automated terminal information service, the ATIS, provides airport and weather information, so ATC doesn't need to provide it to you. It relieves frequency congestion. So remember that a METAR is a report only and not a forecast. It therefore has no validity period, and it's updated every hour unless there is a special weather report, a SPECI. A PIREP is a pilot report that pilots give to one another. I could review all the identifiers and modifiers, but uh, I think you're just going to have to figure those out uh, as you go uh, along. Terminal area forecasts forecast weather at an airport. Clouds are given in AGL, issued every six hours. Graphical area forecasts give weather over a large area. The clouds are in ASL unless noted. SIGMETs forecast severe weather, and AIRMETs forecast adverse weather that are not in the GFAs. But FDs forecast upper winds. Lastly, upper air charts provide weather at a given pressure level, such as at uh, 850 hectopascals, 5,000 feet, 700 uh, hectopascals, or 10,000 feet. They have a wide area of coverage. That concludes the review uh, for meteorology. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this lesson. I've tried my best to make it as practical and, and have you learn as much as possible about meteorology, specifically how to interpret uh, weather. And uh, our next lesson, uh, we're going to be moving on to some more flight operations and navigation. Thanks a lot for joining me, and we'll see you soon.